Hey everybody, One Peg here. I uh, got a little bit of a news report for you. So uh, today there was a Russian devlog uh, translated by my good friend Sneaky Russian 007, and I wanted to give you guys a quick recap of that uh, two-hour podcast, hopefully truncated down into uh, I don't know 15 or 20 minutes or less. Uh, I got my uh, my little handy dandy notebook here um, where I got some notes. So first for uh, game mechanics. Uh, one of the things that they started off talking about was uh, ping and then reshade. Uh, reshade filters and freestyle filters will be further blocked by Tarkov with a full blank screen effect uh, or something similar when modified uh, or further battle eye penalties and uh, in-game kicks uh, will end up occurring as the result of using some of those, I guess, outlawed filters. No word on what exactly these are, but uh, the current blocks will be apparently expanded upon, it seems. Uh, in regard to ping, there was some talk of ping abuse. As we all know, I made that super fun video um, about ping abuse way back when, a few months ago. Uh, it's now up over 100,000 views, so I guess it got a little bit of traction. Um, but according to Nikita, uh, they discussed some ideas of like regional locks, but nothing really came out of that as of yet. He said that it's still mechanically possible to get pings above 200 on certain servers, but BSG is looking into further solutions for this. Um, regarding hatchlings, uh, the main issue that Nikita said um, there is with hatchlings is not necessarily being a hatchling or playing as a hatchling because he conceded that it is a play style that people prefer. He said that the problem is uh, free farming or um, hatchling running to like an extreme level um, of excess. And he said, uh, with some solutions for the long term, he's looking at randomization of the loot spawns that appear in each one of those spawn locations and uh, randomization of hidden stash spawns on certain maps, uh, as well as for the short term, uh, he's looking at the idea of not being able to place barter items into a container, which would be a pretty major change, but obviously I'll let you guys make your determination on whether or not you think that's a good idea. He also mentioned something having to do with like a hidden tag when finding items in raid, but the explanation for that ended up being kind of confusing. Um, it just looks like they're kind of playing around with this idea of, of having some kind of hidden tag. Um, not exactly sure what that entails, but I guess we'll see. They talked about loot boxes. He said quite clearly Tarkov will not have loot boxes for a multitude of different reasons. New quests will be introduced in the future to assist with soft skills leveling speed. But Nikita mentioned leveling these soft skills should take a very long time on release and things like cheesing them like the stress resistance video that I put out not too long ago uh, was something that obviously is not intended. He stated that there would become some new trader levels. Uh, with maybe five or even six possibly uh, levels with uh, special perks and or other bonuses, and specialized loot will be added to those higher tiers. Stat tracking uh, for certain items that are purchasable from traders at, these, at this level may be something that gets added to those items as well. Regarding stats, Nikita mentioned that there will also be uh, a different end of raid screen potentially for people when they die so that they can figure out kind of how or why they died. Uh, that will show kind of an autopsy screen with information showing the last, like, say, several number of shots that hit you, um, as well as which one was the one that caused the fatal amount of damage, including the area hit, caliber of round, etc. cetera. Uh, he stated that there would be new insurance traders that get added, with some new and interesting mechanics for insuring gear or the insurance system. Uh, they increased the timer for reserve and interchange by five minutes. Uh, loot tables in the game. Uh, well, okay, so Nikita ended up stating uh, something having to do with loot tables and changing uh, the way that the game works dynamically with crafting systems, etc. And he said things like loot tables in the game change all the time but aren't announced because they don't want people rushing to those loot locations, which makes sense. Instead, they wanted the community to discover new things and have it disseminate throughout naturally because uh, he thinks it's kind of exciting to discover things. And at some level, I actually kind of agree with this. I think that patch notes maybe should stick to more mechanical changes, 
but I do like this surprise and dissemination of information, uh, especially as the community starts learning about it and becoming more knowledgeable. Right now, going into a raid, um, oh, and regarding bugs and exploitiveness, right now going into a raid with an empty fuel can will fill that can instantly on spawn. Uh, there are people that abuse this system, buying empty cans and extracting with the uh, the full ones and then reselling them on the flea market for a profit. Uh, this is unintended. Um, it is a long speculated bug, but now confirmed. And uh, Nikita said that basically people who have exploited this to, uh, I guess, some level of an extreme will likely end up having their accounts reset at some point in the future. Uh, in regard to raid spawning, there was talks about uh, late spawning, and Nikita said that this was mainly due to out-of-date hardware or or less performing, lesser performing hardware on the client's computer loading the levels more slowly. Uh, I'm not sure what to personally think about this one. Um, I would argue that I have a pretty state-of-the-art uh, computer boasting like the most uh, available consumer level uh, electronics that you can get as components for a PC. Uh, and I can still personally end up in a raid up to three minutes late. Um, it seems like the window for the raid start has been held open longer than that raid countdown is. And I think that that kind of is the larger issue. But Nikita seems to think that the reason why people are loading in late has to do with uh, slow loading times for certain people's PCs. Uh, I, and I don't know what to personally think about this. I mean, maybe you guys know better. Uh, regarding in-game sounds, um, he said that the sounds, for instance, for like the ADAR and a few other weapon systems uh, were a little off um, and had like sound artifacting that they're working on correcting. Um, the shield that they teased on Twitter and Reddit not too long ago uh, will be AI used only. This was something that he had said in a previous podcast that players would not be able to use the riot shields. They would be used by scavs um, and that they're not going to be used by, by PMCs. So that's kind of like in-game mechanic related stuff. And I broke this down into another category, which I guess I titled as social. Um, regarding streamers, there will be a streamer mode added that will hide those players uh, that use it um, from in-game lobbies. And I'm not exactly sure what this really uh, boils down to. I think that the majority of the time, uh, streamers, when they're queuing up for things, don't necessarily have to worry about in-game lobbies or showing up in in-game lobbies since it really only turns on if you have the looking for group tag on. Um, but maybe there's some other thing here that kind of got lost in translation or I didn't notice. Um, he also said that VoIP, uh, we'll be coming along with Steam Audio in the next major update. Future quality of life stuff. Uh, there's going to be a companion app for the flea market, uh, as well as hideout crafting, and that's supposed to be added in the future. Uh, Tarkov will be available at some point on Steam, but after the live launch, and that has no word as to when. Uh, GPUs will have durability added to them, or a lifespan. Uh, so the GPUs that you have in your Bitcoin farm are not going to be permanent fixtures. You're going to have to replace them when they burn out. All of the labs keys will also most likely have durability added to them. And the red key card will be modified to act more like an admin level or master key for the labs. Um, and again, having durability in multiple places that it can be used, that key would degrade the fastest, will probably end up making that key even more expensive. Uh, he said that they may also add a seasonal modifier to the length of daylight per day based on which one of the four seasons we're currently in at the time. Okay, and now future major stuff. Uh, Raid Episode 3 is coming soon with another YouTube premiere countdown, but there's no specific date. Uh, the translated version of the second book is coming soon, and it looks like there's also going to be a third Tarkov book released. Uh, in the eventual regional or open world of Tarkov, there will be a physical trading area that will be karma-based or honor-based, meaning that you will still be able to have live weapons when you walk in there. Uh, killing will not be off-limits, but there will be some severe consequences for someone that commits a violent act in these peaceful areas. Like, um, think the Continental Hotel from John Wick, right? There's excommunicado, in that case, 
It looks like the penalties in this case might be you're going to get hunted for a bounty by PMC bots uh, every time you load into a raid from there on out, and it could get to the point where a trader won't do business with you anymore. A Scav Life DLC was teased with a separate karma system and a prestige system for scabs. Uh, this kind of sounds like a Tarkov version of Hunt Showdown uh, for your scav. Uh, they're talking about adding wind direction and other effects being added, um, like barrel heat levels and how that could potentially affect the ballistics of your shot. Um, a new map was teased that they called Town. Um, it looks like or sounds like a suburb of Streets of Tarkov uh, it's going to have um, landmark buildings like bank, a uh, hotel, a business center, um, and houses. Uh, and it sounded like he said from like the Stalin era uh, of Russia. He said that there's also going to be some significant changes coming for the hideout. Uh, and they um, may add a wiping off or cleaning of the visor type mechanic for face shields. The new map hideout changes and the wipe that goes along with the hideout changes is estimated for approximately three months from now or mid-March of 2020. So for the first time, they've actually given us some type of estimated date as to when we could see the next wipe cycle. And it looks like it's going to be three months away or less, according to what Nikita had to say. In addition to that, there were also some teasers. There was an injector that was shown with craftable bottles of different substances that Nikita said you'll be able to load and unload from this device. He teased the MP or TP9, which is a 9mm SMG. He talked about a war belt type item that will be potentially added to PMCs. I'm not sure if this will be uh, an item that you wear or if it will be a new set of character slots. Um, he also said that the Orsus T5000 will be added. That was teased. Uh, he showed the SR25 and the BPO215, which is a TKM hunting rifle, uh, bolt-action hunting rifle, which will probably become the, the newest of the meme guns uh, inside of Tarkov. That's all I have for the update from the dev blog. I'm sure there were some other minor things that I ended up missing, but those are the real major points. Uh, the durability on keys is, is going to be huge. Uh, I, I can't wait to see what the economic impact of something like that is going to be like. Um, and it looks like they're progressively moving toward this system of more and more uh, temporary use items and kind of making the existence in Tarkov almost more expensive or money churning, I guess would be a better way to put it. You have the capability of making a lot of money, but also they want to make sure people keep spending it, I guess is the way that this seems. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and this update. I hope you did. If you did, please consider checking out my god awful content at twitch.tv slash one peg. And I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks.